Good morning and uh, welcome to Good Shepherd. I'm behind you. Uh, <laughs> 
this is a confirmation Sunday. Uh, great to have you uh, with us today and uh, see many uh, family and friends. Thank you for supporting uh, your confirmand and uh, for being with us here in worship today. We pray the Lord's blessings as we uh, worship together. We will be following the printed order of worship that you have there in front of you. All of the hymns have been picked by our confirmands and you can see on the yellow insert that you have uh, both the confirmation verse for the confirmand and then also the hymn that they uh, uh, chose as part of our worship service for this morning. So again, we pray the Lord's blessings. Our opening hymn is going to be 425, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, and we will be standing on the last verse. Day and night. 
Dear friends in Christ, God has indeed declared our sins forgiven. We have been made new creatures because of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection. We can be sure that the kingdom of God isn't just coming, it is here among us. Therefore, as a call and ordained servant of Christ, in his stead and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I read a choice from Psalm 92. We will read it responsibly. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They still bear fruit in old age. To declare that the Lord is upright. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Our prayer of the day, which we will be praying together, is Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Please be seated. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 14a and 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for this morning is going to be our sermon text for this confirmation. It is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 25, and we will read the verses together. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. 
having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for the Holy Gospel? Gospel for this morning is in St. Luke, 24th chapter 13 through 35. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered, him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, in word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Our confession of faith this morning comes out of Luther's small catechism, and it is this question, what is confirmation? Confirmation is the public right of the church, preceded by a period of instruction designed to help baptized Christians identify with the life and mission of the church. Prior to admission to the Lord's Supper, it is necessary to be instructed in the Christian faith. The rite of confirmation provides an opportunity for the individual Christian, relying on God's promise given in holy baptism, to make a personal public confession of the faith and a lifelong pledge of fidelity to Christ. This is most certainly true. Please be seated.
Jesus died and rose again so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base for our message on this Confirmation Sunday is our epistle lesson from 1 Peter 1, verses 17 to 25. Dear friends in Christ and confirmands, Elizabeth Elliot wrote something that rings true. She said, we cannot capitulate to the spirit of the age or accommodate ourselves to what the public is said to want. The public is notoriously fickle. If we could ascertain what it wants this week, it would still be impossible to predict what it might want next week. Oh, how true. We are just one news cycle away from something new. A few weeks ago, it was all about the Ukraine. Then came the anniversary of the bombing at the Boston Marathon, and now this week, Donald Sterling and the deadly tornadoes. What's next on the horizon? Who knows? But we can be sure the public will lap it up for a day or two. Do you ever feel out of place? Well, we've all had that experience. Life can be that way at times. For the Christian, it is not all that unusual because we are just passing through. Confirmation Sunday in the text reminds us we are just exiles in the world. Now Peter states it this way, if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. Now the dictionary defines exile in this way, a person driven from his native place. Not bad for those in the faith, is it? We know the map. We know the hymn, heaven is my home, exiles in the world. Now the fear we have is not a cowering fear of God that he's going to do something to us if we do something wrong. On the contrary, this takes us back to Good Friday and the fact that Jesus would suffer the agony of the cross, the depths of hell for the punishment of our sin. So we should never treat sin lightly. And we live in reverent fear because the world is constantly chipping away, tearing at even the strongest of Christians to rationalize certain aspects of the faith. It's a battle for your soul and mine. The devil and the world are not going to give up. Now sure, we all get caught up in the world. We don't always see ourselves as exiles. On those really good days we have once in a while, we could see ourselves making this rolling sphere our permanent home. But as we age, we know it can't last. We understand the exile part a little bit better with each heartache and sorrow and sickness and roadblock we face. Our sinful ways have their limits. Peter calls them futile. He calls the things of this age perishable. He pierces our heart with the reminder that all flesh is like grass and its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls. All that man is proud of is in his earthly existence beauty and strength and honor and wealth and education and achievement and greatness is but the bloom of grass and then no more. So if all that we accomplish here is all there is, our hope is shattered. Banishment is all we have to look forward to. You know, so many in our world see it that way, and that brings trouble to all of us who interact. Those grasping for everything here will walk over those of us exiling our years away. Your future outlook makes all the difference. You're either living for yourself or living for him who saved you. 
And he has, you know. You were ransomed from feudal ways, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ to, so that your faith and hope are in God. We have received, you and I, new citizenship papers. Before the creation of the world, God knew you. He loved you. He already had decided to send Jesus to die for your sins in order that you would have forgiveness and eternal life. And exile no more, a permanent home in heaven kept for you. We are exiles here because we belong to God forever. We know His love will never fail us even as the love of others grows cold. And what is important is that we live our lives in the light of His resurrection from the grave, knowing that we too, because of Christ, will be resurrected unto eternal life. And that brings us to the question of the day on Confirmation Sunday. What are you, what are we, you and I, and you confirmants, what are we doing with Jesus as we live as exiles in the world? A.W. Tozer wrote this, The weakness of so many Christians is that they feel too much at home in this world. In their effort to have restful adjustment to unregenerate society, they've lost their pilgrim character and become an essential part of the very moral order against which they are sent to protest. You see, too many times in life, we think our mission is to get adjusted to the world. Oh no, my friends. We are to make a difference in the world as we live out our faith. Our loving efforts, which Peter calls us to do, are not always appreciated. We may get the cold shoulder, the agonizing glance, the lost friendship. But that happens with exiles. When we take the living and abiding word of God that remains forever to a world, whose permanent home is in the depths of their soul, we can expect some pushback. Truth is pure. Impurity conflicts with the gospel. When an exile speaks, temporary banishment could be the result. But I say to all of you and to our confirmands, do not worry. You are part of a family and a brotherhood whose fatherland is heaven. And like the new cycle of our day, the dips in the road of life too shall pass. We live not for this world, but for the world to come. And making that your daily business takes the edge off of all the distractions and the hurts of the world. But it also comforts you and I with this truth. Not only are we exiles in this world, but because of Jesus, we are possessors of eternal light. Exile. May God bless your faith today and always. Amen. Please turn to page 272 in the front portion of your hymnal where we have the rite of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father in heaven, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven. He is at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God, and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Abby Ray Biddle. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened with you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Abby's verse, Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. William Jonas Searle Dow, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Will's verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life.
Anna Lee Holland, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. And his verse, Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. Isabella Mary Jane Kessler, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Izzy's verse, John 3, 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. Kathleen Marie Perry, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Katie's verse, 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your son and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you as you go and live out your confirmation vows in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please rise for the prayer for the church? Prayers of the church for this morning are printed out for us responsibly on page four. Heavenly Father, your son is victor over death and the grave. Strengthen us during this Easter season to believe and live from the good news that even as he triumphed over death in the grave, so shall all who place their trust in him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Kind Father, according to your great mercy, you have caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Keep us steadfast in the hope of the inheritance that cannot fade, that is imperishable, and that is kept in heaven for us. And give us a steadfast faith as we wait for the final resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All loving one, in your son's ministry, he brought healing to many with diseased and damaged bodies. 
bless, comfort, and sustain all who have requested our prayers, especially remembering Johanna Kirshner as she has now been moved to a treatment facility. We pray for Bob Jarrett, the brother-in-law of Betty Beer undergoing cancer treatments, and Amy Hardy, the daughter of John and Paula as she is undergoing medical tests. Grant that they may look to you in every need, draw comfort from your abiding word, and daily rejoice in the good news that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, with a thankful heart, we praise you, our Maker, our Savior, the giver and protector of our Christian faith and life. By ourselves, we are weak and powerless. With you, we have strength and salvation. On this Confirmation Sunday, help us always to live as a believer should, trusting in your promises and blessings for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. We join together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The Lord's table has been prepared. Please be seated.
God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in one true faith, on the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed for the forgiveness of your sin. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Give our in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have taught us what you have, would have us believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to hold fast your word in hearts which you have cleansed, that thereby we may be made strong in faith and perfect in holiness and be comforted in life and in death. Amen. Now go in the peace of the Lord as we live out our confirmation vows.
Welcome again in Christ's name. Thank you all for uh, being here again today. We're going to have the uh, confirmands uh, come out to the back. And uh, they were all worried about getting hugs and kisses, so please give them a lot. Uh, especially if you're a stranger, they were really worried about that. So if you don't know these kids at all, uh, you know, kiss them up and uh, we'll just see how they react. <laughs> they look at them, they're all scared. They got the, yeah, they got the scared look already. So, all right, I will hand it over to our elder and uh, you guys will join me. Good one. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? Thank you very much. Again, congratulations to our confirmands and their families. Um, other than anything and everything that's listed in the bulletin itself, uh, of course, today's service will be posted to our uh, church website and YouTube channel, so you can watch it uh, at your leisure, and I will send that out to everybody. You can see and relive the experience of the uh, child confirmed again. Other than that, does anybody have any other announcements? Things you'd like to share? Hearing none, go with God's grace and have a great week.